Step two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. In step one, we came to accept our powerlessness and the unmanageability of our situation. Once we had truly taken that to heart, we were left in a painful situation. We had admitted that we could not handle the compulsion to debt on our own, that our power was insufficient to the task. Where then were we to turn? Step two told us to turn to a power greater than ourselves, that this power could restore us to sanity. We had found this troubling. Some of us said to ourselves, I thought I was in Debtors Anonymous meeting, but now it sounds like a cross between a house of worship and a psychiatric hospital. I'm here to stop debting. How can a higher power possibly help me? It was not unusual for new members to balk at the word sanity, at the suggestion that we were not entirely of sound mind before coming into DA. Our picture of sanity did not match what we saw in our own lives, and we rejected the idea out of hand. Unmanageability is one thing, but insanity? Isn't that just a little melodramatic? It helped us to remember the role that powerless and unmanageability played in our lives. Using credit or charge cards as our personal or business cash reserves, accepting services we could not pay for, hiding from our creditors by not answering the phone or not opening our mail, lying to family members, customers, and others about our true financial situations, obsessing about our credit ratings when we shouldn't have been using credit to begin with. There were behaviors that demonstrated the symptoms of our compulsive disease, failing to obtain and understand necessary information when signing binding contracts to take out loans or apply for new credit cards, Avoiding paying bills, even when we had money to pay them, and holding on to exploitive or manipulative clients in our businesses. Other symptoms that arose from our debting were physical signs of not taking care of our health, emotional instability, and breakdowns in our relationships. We had to ask ourselves, did this sound rational? Some of us, those who had at one time or another managed to live within our means for a while, continued to argue. You don't understand, we said. I could control my debting when I really tried. I was capable of smart decisions I had managed in the past. Surely I could do it again. If we were fully honest, however, we had to ask ourselves, if we could so easily control our compulsive debting, why hadn't we? If we could stop on our own, we would have surely done so given the pain that debting caused in our lives. Whatever might have been true at one time, we had come to DA because our lives were out of control. Our own intelligence had not saved us from our compulsion to incur unsecured debt. Step one made that evident. We had repeated the same cycle, thinking that somehow we would find a way to make debt work for us, and we had failed. Yet on we went, same old thinking, same old behaviors, same old results. In short, same old insanity. This is why we needed help. And in Debtors Anonymous, we learned where to get it. From a power greater than ourselves. The logic of this was clear. If our own power was insufficient to deal with compulsion to live beyond our means, we needed a greater power. However, many of us guarded or skeptical about this. Members talked about a power greater than themselves and referred to faith. So, was DA a religious organization? What was expected of us in this context? What if we had already committed to a set of religious beliefs or had left a religion with no desire to return? Or had found religion objectionable or just unhelpful with our debting problem? Would DA still work for us? We found that the answers to these questions came in good time. If we were still fairly new to the DA Fellowship and the Steps, we needed time to look around and better understand the impact of Step 2. Yes, some DA members chose th to use words like God, and most spoke of a higher power and faith. This did not make DA a religion in any manner whatsoever. The logic of Step 2 is simple. What was it we lacked? The power to stop acquiring unsecured debt and to find recovery. 
What was it we needed? A power greater than ourselves that could bring sanity into our lives so that we no longer, we were no longer driven by a compulsion to debt of our own making. This higher power could take many forms. Once we had attended DA meetings a while, we began to look forward to going and found that we felt relief afterward. Those who had walked the DA path ahead of us found a peace that we craved. They inspired us with stories of debts resolved, relationships restored, and visions fulfilled. Even when members were having difficulties, they seemed to address them in a sane, serene fashion, speaking of hope and gratitude. Over time, we came to rely on the collective strength and wisdom of the recovery found in our DA groups. And what was that but a power greater than ourselves that could bring sanity back into our lives? Some of us found that the DA fellowship as a whole made for an appropriate greater power, while others discovered that they were seeking in the collective wisdom of the steps, the tools, and the literature. The more time we spent with the program and its principles, the more we realized that they had contained not only knowledge and wisdom, but profound compassion. Others of us looked outside DA for a power greater than ourselves. What we discovered was that if we were honest, open-minded, and willing, we found what we were seeking. We might have found it simply in the peace of a favorite outdoor place or in the joy of watching our children play or in the love we shared with those closest to us, or in a chance moment of awe at the universe. Some of us did choose to use the term God and to associate this greater or higher power with our religious beliefs. This too was a fine alternative. If we had positive experiences with God and religious community, we found that it fit nicely with the DA concept of a power greater than ourselves that could restore us to sanity. Sometimes we questioned why, Despite all our prayers for help and healing, relief from our compulsion to debt did not begin until we came in to DA. When we were fully honest with ourselves, we saw that, however earnest our prayers, we were asking God to do all the work while we set back and continued to debt. DA provided a route for a higher power to show us what, we, what work we had to do. It started with step one. There are those of us who are troubled by the idea of a greater power even after familiar with the ideas discussed here. We had had extremely painful experiences with those more powerful than ourselves. And the last thing we wanted to do was to put faith in another such being. Some of us in this position are survivors of violence or abusive authority figures. To us... A power greater than ourselves meant our human beings meant the human beings who had caused such pain and grief. Our growth in step two was slow and sometimes halting. We had to find a new level of trust to experience DA as a safe place. In time, by taking a chance and trusting a power greater than ourselves, we were able to find the same healing from compulsive debting that others had. Our painful experiences had not put this out of our reach. Among Debtors Anonymous members, there are those of us who carried within ourselves a debt-specific resistance to a higher power. Whether or not we were raised with religious beliefs, some of us had concluded that God and money did not mix. Maybe we distinguished between the material and the spiritual realm, placing money in the former and God in the latter. We concluded that we must operate without God's help in material matters. More than one DA member has observed, I thought my higher power had better things to do than worry about my debt. Or, I was convinced that money was to be too base for God. Perhaps we thought that no matter how much of a power greater than ourselves had helped us in other areas of our lives, we should just be able to handle debt on our own. If we did look outside ourselves, we might have tried to make an accountant, a tax attorney, a credit counselor, or even a book about debt relief our higher power. Surely they had the answers and could solve our debt problem. In the end, we were reminded that the compulsion to live beyond our means was not about money. It is about compulsion. Step two is a vital part of the spiritual solution that offers us a way out of a life driven by the compulsion to debt. 
Back in the 1930s, a friend said to one of the co-founders of Alcoholics Anonymous, why don't you choose your own conception of God? This choice made his recovery possible. Making such choices has been at the root of recovery for everyone who finds freedom from unsecured debt and a life of sanity in DA. Each of us gets to say for ourselves, this is what my higher power does or says or is. These are the characteristics of my God. It was this idea more than anything that opened wide the door for us. This was not the God of one religion or any religion. This higher power did not have to be called God, did not have to be called anything. Did we believe that there was no supernatural personage as described in many religions? DA longtimers assured us that many had successfully worked a program of recovery by choosing a higher power that was not a deity. Had we abandoned the religion we grew up with because we did not believe in, puni in a punishing God? There were those in DA with the same experience, and they had chosen to believe in a higher power that was endlessly compassionate, unfailingly safe, and protective. Did we believe in a God but feared that God had no time for our compulsion to debt? We heard in the strong voices of those in DA recovery that choosing to change their beliefs had brought them sanity and peace. As we continued our DA program and worked step two to the best of our ability, we began to experience certain benefits. We were growing in our ability to ask for help and to give help. And every time we did, we learned a little more about how much lighter our burdens were when shared. Although we did not yet know the fullness of the peace we saw on the faces of longtime members, we had more moments of mental and emotional serenity than we had known in years. We started to let go of the need for immediate gratification, of the need to have something right now, and choose instead to talk to another DA member before taking any action that might affect our recovery. This saved us from decisions driven by our self-will that we might later regret. Why was this happening? Because we're coming to believe in a power greater than ourselves that could indeed restore us to sanity. For many of us, coming to believe proved to be an exhilarating lifetime journey and one of ongoing spiritual adventures of recovery.